What do I have to do in this one? Before we can do anything, we have to get zero on one side, everything else on the other, right? So what's an easy way to do that? Yeah, I'm going to add 20 to both sides, but if I write it down as is, I get something weird looking. I get 9a plus a squared plus 20. Don't forget the equals zero, right? Up here in that last problem, don't forget that equals zero when you get everything on one side, zero on the other. Don't forget the equals zero here as well. How should I reorder the left side? Descend, it's a trinomial, you want descending powers of a. So a squared plus 9a plus 20 equals zero. Okay, let's practice our guidelines on the left side. You, you know that we want to factor this guy. You see three terms, look at the, okay, look, is there a common factor? Always look for that first, no. Then you look at the number of terms. You see three terms, so what do you do? Reverse FOIL, right? So write down two parentheses. Don't forget the equals zero, leave that in there. Okay, the, what do the first multipliers have to be? A and A. It's a one in front of the A squared, that's good news, right? Because it's very systematic. You look for two numbers whose product is what? 20 and whose sum is nine. Everything's positive. So what are those numbers gonna be? Yep, A plus four, A plus five. Okay, you've got your product on the left side, that's the factorization. What does the zero product rule say you can do now with both factors? Okay, so you said a plus four equal to zero. Either a plus four equals zero or a plus five equals zero. So you solve both of those, what do you get? A equals negative four or a equals negative five. Part E, y minus six times y plus six equals 45. You look at this and at first you think it's good news. We've got our factorization, right? But wait, why is it not good news? Because we don't have a 45 product rule. We have a zero product rule, right? So you can't set, it doesn't work to set both factors equal to 45. That would be nonsense. Um, so you actually um, have to multiply this out on the left side. And yeah, bring the 45 over eventually by subtracting it. But in order to combine it with like terms and, and, and in order to be able to factor the left side, you're gonna have to multiply out the left side first or at some point. So what, let's do it first. What do, you, what do you get if you multiply out the left side? Y minus six times Y plus six? Y squared minus? 36. This is a plus b, or a, in this case, a minus b times a plus b in reverse, right? It's going to be a squared minus b squared. But you could just foil it out if you don't remember that or, or you don't recognize that and realize the outer and inner terms knock each other out. You get a plus 6y and a minus 6y, so that y term is gone. And you just have y squared minus 36 when you multiply out the first and the last term. So, um, and then we have equals 45. Oh, so how could we solve this? There is no y term, so there's actually a couple of different options here. So you want to subtract 45, that's one option. I'll show you the other way to do it in a minute. So get everything on one side, set it equal to zero. That's what we've been doing, so it makes sense to do it that way first. And then... Um, if we, if we do that, what do we get? Minus 81, y squared minus 81, minus 36, minus 45, minus 81. And then we wanna factor that left side. We need products on the left side, right? To use the zero product rule. So what can we do? Difference of two squares formula, right? A plus B, A minus B. Let's see if we can do this without writing the formula down. What's acting like A? What are you squaring to get Y squared? What are you squaring to get 81? So we actually did write it down within the context of the factorization, right? So it's gonna be, what's the formula gonna be? Y plus nine and then the other factor, 
y minus 9. So we have our factorization. What do we do with both factors? We have it set equal to 0. That's important too. What do we do with both factors? Either y plus 9 equals 0 or y minus 9 equals 0. So what do you get? Yeah. Subtract 9 from both sides here, add 9. Is there a compact way to write that? y equals negative 9 or y equals 9? Yeah, plus or minus, y equals plus or minus 9. What's the alternative method that you could use in this case? So instead of getting everything on one side, you could, and by the way, this works when you do not have a, a y to the first power or a variable to the first power term, just, just the squared term. You could have, instead of subtracting 45, you could have added 36 to both sides, and it would become, uh, here, so here's the, here's the alternate universe uh, version of this problem. We could have, in another universe, maybe we did, add 36 first uh, and get y squared equals 81. Uh, y squared equals 81, so what's the alternative method? Square root both sides because the square root of y squared is just y, isn't it? Uh, but there's a problem if you just take the square root of both sides. You're not getting all the solutions. So we throw in a or minus, right? This is the plus solution. We throw in the plus or minus so that we get all the solutions. We throw it in on this side. And then, then you get the same answer we got before. You get y equals plus or minus 9, meaning y could be 9 or negative 9. And that method works great if you don't have a y to the first power term, okay? Or a variable to the first power term. Any questions on that one?